All right, that means if you're, if, since so many people are standing, if you're waiting on a book, just raise your hand, like wave down an usher today. Uh, a book for you, a book for you, a book for you, a book for you. That's what we want to do right now. We want to give them out and, and put it in your hand and hopefully, hopefully it won't just get buried in your closet somewhere, but you will actually open it up and read it and I believe that as you do, you'll be blessed by it. Okay, everybody, every location, we welcome you. We're so glad you're in the house today. We welcome you in Yakima. We welcome you in DuPont. We welcome you in Bellevue. We welcome you online, and we welcome you right here in Tacoma. So glad that you are with us. Stand to your feet, if you would, everybody, and say this out loud. Say, my heart's open. My mind's ready. Make me better, God. By your word. I receive it. I believe it. I receive it. I believe it. I receive it. I believe it. And I won't be the same again. In Jesus' name. That's our confession of faith. And everybody said a great big amen. Amen. You may be seated today. We're going to begin this series on the topic of forces that form your future. And I want to begin with just one small verse that sets the table for this topic. It's an Old Testament verse found in Deuteronomy 29, 29. And it reads like this. It says, the secret things belong to the Lord our God. Everybody shout secret things. But the things revealed belong to us and our children forever. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the revealed things. And I want to explain that to you today. What what are secret things, you might wonder? Well, secret things are those exceptional circumstances that are unplanned, unexpected, unavoidable, inevitable. They're what I call the lightning bolts of life. They just seem to come out of nowhere, catch you completely off guard. You didn't see You didn't see the divorce papers coming. You didn't see the accident or tragedy that happened, that injured or hurt or took somebody's life that you love. The lightning bolts. The phone rang. The voice on the other end told you something that staggered you. It's called secret things. And then there's the revealed things. And let me explain that to you. Revealed things is the knowledge and the wisdom available for us today that help us to make wise decisions, good choices. If it's a truth about life that you can find in a book or a principle or a revelation that exists somewhere in scripture or somewhere handed down to you by your parents or your mentors that's what we call a revealed thing secret things belong to God and things that are revealed belong to us and our children forever. I want to ask you, if you would, to picture yourself sitting at a table face to face with God. Don't get sidetracked about what He looks like and all that. Just work with me here. There's a small pile of green chips on the table that represent the secret things of your life. And then there's another much larger pile of red chips 
that represent things that he's revealed to humanity and to mankind. And every time you start to put your focus and attention on the secret things, imagine God pulling those things toward him and reminding you that belongs to me. Trust me with that. The why, the bad experience, the thing you don't understand, the injustice, your negative family history, the disappointment, the way you wanted it to happen versus the way it did happen. Imagine God pulling it close and looking you in the eye and telling you that belongs to me. And then imagine him taking the red chips and pushing them to your side of the table. As if to say, here's what I've given you. These belong to you. These belong to your children. The pile of chips of what we now know are things revealed is what I call the forces that form your future. You're going to see them go up on the screen coming out of a young preacher's search and research. God, how does this thing called life work? And I took my shot at it, and that's what this is all about. I gave it my best to take what I knew and what I understand, which is not cer certainly not everything. But my journey was so fulfilling as I began to understand what I'm sharing with you today. And these nine forces have by far the greatest influence on your future. They're at work within you right now. They represent the power and potential given to you by God to govern your life and to create your future. You have the power. Listen to me. You have the power to rename the problem. You have a God-given ability to rename the setback. Rename the betrayal, the letdown, the heartache. God's given you the ability to flip the script. What is meant for evil, God's given you the ability and the power as a child of God a man of God, a woman of God. God's given you the potential to trust him, believe in him. Activate something good in response to something bad. And to literally turn things around and things that were meant for evil. Joseph said this in the Bible. He said, what you intended to harm me, God meant for my good. Which is why we say your future doesn't happen to you. Your future happens through you. And if you want to live your best life, you have to stop seeing your life as something that happens to you and start seeing your life as something that happens through you. You're a product of your choices, not a victim of your circumstances. 
I want to say that again. You're a product of your choices, not a victim of your circumstances. <laughs> Come on, church family, listen to me today. Where you are right now, in, in most part, is the result of the choices you've made in your life up until now. And where you will be in the future is the same. You will be where your choices take you. There's a quote. I went and saw this guy as many times as I could talk when I was a young teenager and just, you know, a, a young man. I loved him. He, he's passed away since then, but many of you know who he is. named Zig Ziglar. And I brought out a Zig quote today. He says, your life is a result of the choices you have made. If you don't like your life, start making better choices. <laughs> Go Zig. <laughs> Look what, look what the Lord said. Look what God says in Deuteronomy about that. He says, today, I've given you the choice between life and death, blessing and cursing. And now I call heaven to witness the choice that you make. Woo! And then he like makes his God appeal. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants, you and your children, for generations to come, might live. So powerful. So powerful when you began to understand God set before me life and death. I am not a victim of my circumstances. Life doesn't just happen to me. I get an opportunity when it hits me, I get an opportunity to define it. I get an opportunity to declare what it's going to be in my future. What, what feels like a curse right now, I'm gonna define it as a blessing in disguise. What seems to be a setback right now, I'm gonna turn it into a comeback. What seems to be all hell breaking loose against me, and, and, and winning in my life, I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to say, heaven hasn't spoke up yet. Heaven is going to do something good in this situation. You see, God's blessed you with a great power. I said, God's blessed you with a great power. He's blessed you with great potential. He put you here on earth. He's given you the opportunity of a lifetime. I like to think of it like this. Opportun or life is a gift from God. And what we do with it is our gift back to Him. Yeah. Am I helping anybody right now? Yeah. Hey, Christian, come, come, come up if you would. Is, is my mic breaking up? Yeah. Yeah. So, Christian, last time I did this example in church. I used your dad. I don't remember if I used you along with him or not. But I want you to get down right now. This, this guy, this is, his first, this is his first fall to not have on a football uniform in years. And I thought I would help him out by telling him to do some push-ups for us today. Okay, so I want you to do some push-ups. Do them sideways. Do them side. We want to make sure your nose hits the ground. <laughs> sideways in front of everybody. Push-up. You ready? Count off ten. All right, you can jump up. Wait, no, no, you're not done yet. How many of you know that him doing those push-ups didn't help you a bit? You are not stronger because he did those push-ups. I'm not stronger because he did those push-ups. How many of you know he can't do your push-ups for you? <laughs> In fact, nobody can do your push-ups for you. Like, you could pay somebody lots of money. Say, please get up every morning at 6 a.m. 
and go spend an hour in the gym for me. How many of you know you're not going to get any stronger? You're not going to get any more healthy. It doesn't matter how much. It doesn't happen. It's impossible. And what I want you to understand is that God gave you potential. You, you, thank you. Thank you, Christian. God gave you the potential to do push-ups. He gave you the ability to do push-ups. Everybody that is in every room, across every location, you might not yet be strong enough to do a push-up, but you have the ability to do a push-up. You can do a push-up. But just because he gave you the ability to do a push-up doesn't mean he will do your push-ups for you. And no one else can either. So God won't and other people won't. And here's what I want you to understand. No one else can go to church for you. Well done. Everybody that's in church today, come on, let's give one another a great big hand. You, you are in church. No one else can read a book for you. No one else can learn for you. My, my grandson, Cody, youngest grandson, he's been learning how to ride a bike recently. And I, I think he quit a hundred times. I, he's like, you know, take this job and shove it. I am not doing this no more. Like he just, like he ain't doing it. And, and when he would quit, we all quit. Like, you know, we, okay, he's done. He's not going to go for it anymore today. But you know what? He kept coming back to the bike. He kept coming back to the bike. What could we do? We could cheer him on. What could we do? We could, we could push him. We could, his dad could run alongside him, like all the way down the street. Like well, we could do all of, but no one, no one could learn to ride the bike for him. And that's what we need to understand about life and the way God created life to work is that no one else can build your friendships for you. No one else can make your decisions for you. God doesn't choose where you invest your energy and your time and your money. We, we, we make those choices. God, God doesn't choose our habits or our words. That's where these forces come in. He doesn't choose our thoughts. These are the forces that form your future and God doesn't choose any of those things for anybody. And God doesn't force us to make the, the, the choice a certain way. He simply stands in front of us and says, choose life. Choose life. Like, choose the right habit. Choose the right word. Choose the right thought. Choose the right relationship. Because when you do, you're going to experience the life of God, the blessing of God, the fruit of making the right choices in your life. If you're getting it, come on. If you're getting it, clap your hands today. Now, what God does is he does like the parent running alongside the child learning how to ride a bike. God shows us in his word the way of life. He shows us the way of blessing. He, 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 he sends people like me into your life right now, not just to agitate you or irritate you, but to actually speak to you. And to tell you this is truth. But what you do with it is completely 100% up to you. I've noticed that a lot of people, going back to the secret things that belong to God, I've noticed that a lot of people allow the secret things to have the greatest influence on their life. And, and they focus their attention on the tragedy and the injustice and the circumstances that are beyond their control. They focus on something that happened in the past that they can't do anything about. No one can do anything to change. And I just wanna to say to you today that when you do that, you're giving up your God-given power and authority to rise above your circumstances and live in your purpose and your destiny. And, and what you're doing when you do that is you're, you're claiming the, the green chips. You're focusing on the, the, the green chips. The ones that God says, trust me with that. You can't do anything about that. 
But trust me with that. And declare what I've taught you in the word to declare. Proclaim that there's going to be a blessing that's going to come out of that bad experience. And, and, and God, God's saying, leave the, please leave the green chip alone. Like, please, don't mess, it'll mess up your life if you focus on the green chip. And, and every time you focus on the green chip, you're going you're gonna to take your focus off the red chips. You're going to take your focus off of the forces that are actually going to form and create your future. I sat on a plane this week and I listened to a pilot explain that even though we, there was a delay, that we were going to take off towards Seattle. And, and, I, and I, was, I was really happy. I, I, wanted, I wanted to come home. And, but he explained to all of us, he said, now there, there's some storms above us and there's going to be storms around us and I need you to just, you know, I need you to get ready and make sure you're in your seat and, and prepared and, and your seatbelt is on. It's, the ride's going to get a little bit bumpy and we're going to go for it. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to take off and we're going to get you to Seattle safe. You see, the pilot... And, and air traffic control could not, they, they could not control the weather. But what he explained to us was that we're going to, we're going to go up and then we're going to go around. We're going to go above, we're going to go around the storms and the clouds as best we can. And we're going to get you there safe. You know why that pilot could talk that way to all of us? Because he was equipped. He had everything that he needed to rise above that storm, get through that storm, break out into the sunshine, and get us where we were meant to go. He had everything he needed. He had the knowledge he needed. He had the potential he needed. He had the brain he needed. He had the airplane he needed. So when we took off, I, I think there were certain people looking around me looking around me at other faces. I know there were some people that were like wondering if they were, that this was a good thing or not. But for me, I was loving every minute of it. Like, not just because I wanted to get home, but I just kind of loved that. Mm, I got a pilot who's not afraid. <laughs> I got a pilot who knows what he's doing here. And you know, that's exactly the way it happened. Bumps happen and, and, and moments of gasping. But obviously, we landed safe. I'm here with you right now. One of the forces is the force of a seed sown. It's one of the forces. And in Genesis 26, going along with this experience I had this week on an airplane, in Genesis 26, there was a famine in the land. And I want to show you what the scripture says a man named Isaac did in the middle of the famine. In the middle of the famine. Now, in famine, you, you, you hold on to seed, you conserve seed, you know that if you put a seed in the ground, that it's going to be scorched, it's going to die, you're going to be wasting your seed. But the Bible says that Isaac planted crops in that land the same year, and he reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. I want to pause long enough for you to grasp the word picture. Isaac sowed seed in a season of famine, okay? And then he reaped a hundredfold because the Lord was with him. What are you saying, Pastor Kevin? I'm saying that he could have let the circumstances discourage him to the point where he would have thought there's no use in even trying. But instead, he recognized that if he didn't sow seed for the harvest that he wanted, there was no chance of harvest coming. The power of a seed sown is the only thing that creates a potential harvest. And Scripture says, don't be weary in doing good. 
For at the proper time, you're going to reap a harvest. If you don't give up, if you don't just withhold your seed when the circumstances are working against you, when you feel the futility of life, when you feel like, what's the use? When you feel like this is not changing anything, when your mind tells you, like, you can't, there's a storm, you can't, you can't go where you want to go. There's a crisis. There's economic issues, and problem, and challenges. And, but what I want to tell you today is that no matter what bad happens to you in your life, God's given you the power to continue to sow good seed. And I want to encourage you, don't stop sowing. No matter what the weather is, the book of Ecclesiastes says that. Don't look too long at the clouds. You'll get discouraged. Don't look at the storm because you, you, you'll, you'll, you'll get down about it. But he says, in the morning, wake up and sow your seed. Keep on sowing your seed. Keep on giving out the smile. Keep on doing the right thing. Keep on saying the right words. Keep on investing yourself in the, in the good cause. Don't give up on your children. Keep on giving everything you can, sowing every seed you can sow, because the harvest is a power that will not be denied. And when we sow seed, come on, we're creating a force that is forming and shaping our future. And what's true for us as individuals is also true for us as a church, by the way. The reason we're able to continue to see the harvest that we see in our church is because all of the people who invest their time and their resources and their lives eagerly and, and, and ambitiously. Like, thank you to all the men who made it possible for us to have an incredible man camp the last couple of days. We had our first ever man camp. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to all the men investing. Like, we can't just do that. One person can't do that. Like, I can't announce, hey, we're going to go to this property. You know, we're going to show up and, you know, and us all get out there and scratch our heads and look at one another and sing Kumbaya. No, somebody has to set up the chair. Somebody has to set up the tent. Somebody has to prepare the place. Somebody has to get it all ready. Thank you, men. That's called seed sowing. And I want to thank all the welcoming teams, the kids teams, the worship team, the hospitality team, the youth team. You know why? Because we can't do what we do. And, 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 and you know what? We do what we do. We sow seeds and then God shows up and he does what we cannot do. But for over 30 years, what we're experiencing is the forces of seed song. And many of you who are young right now or you're new to our church and you're, you're coming into this church and Maybe some of you are like, wow, you know, well, this doesn't happen overnight, trust me. A lot of seed sowing, a lot of getting up when you don't feel like it and pressing through. And people have volunteered and people have done and people have given and people have made all of this possible and now we get to celebrate continual great harvest. Why? Because we did not withhold our hand and we kept on sowing good seed. I want to invite everybody, jump in on some of these opportunities that we have going right now. Like, don't, don't just contemplate or sit on the sideline. Uh, we mentioned the, you know, the rooted. We, we talked about church essentials. This Thursday night, I'm, I personally am going to, I've written out, out outlines, um, and, and I'm, going to, I'm going to teach all of you about building the teams in your life. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you about building your family team. I'm, I'm going to talk to you about building your team at work. I'm going to talk to you about the church team. I'm going to talk to you about building the teams of your life, how you can make the teams of your life better. But I can't make you come to that. And there's going to be people that are not going to come, and they're not going to get anything there, and they're not going to learn anything from that because nobody else can go for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then there's people who are going to get involved, and they're going to do things, and your life is going to grow. 
Your life is going to be different. Church is not just what happens on Sunday. Church is community. It's a community to belong to. It's a place to get involved. It's a place to learn and to grow and to make friendship and relationship where iron sharpens iron. And one man sharpens another. Man, I'm preaching today. I haven't preached in four or five weeks till this weekend. I'm... The second, and, and this is the, the only other one I'll talk a little bit about today, is the force of a belief. The force of a belief. Your, your future is determined in large part by what you believe. Not that your believing in something makes it true, but your belief causes you to live as if it were true, which influences your life your behavior, and your experience. All beliefs are not equal in value. All beliefs don't lead to the same place or give us the same outcome. While while some beliefs will hurt you, there are other beliefs that will really help you. And some beliefs will hold you back and other beliefs will move you forward. Beliefs are a force. I don't know what your mom and dad believed. I don't know what people around you believe. But I want to encourage you to manage the gate of your own beliefs. It's not too late to start right now. There's some of you that you need to throw in that belief. You need to get rid of that belief. You pick that up from family, friends, rumors, beliefs about yourself, beliefs about God, beliefs about your church or about church. And it's there. And it's affecting your life. People have beliefs about God that's affecting their relationship with God. Like if you see God as a God that doesn't care, it'll affect your life experience. But if you see God as a God who cares and loves, and is generous, who wants to help me, that will affect your life experience. Your belief is a force. It's a powerful force. What do you believe about your marriage right now? Do you believe it's like going to be just like you're going to hopefully make it through? I mean, there's vows out right now. I've heard, heard that people get married and say, we, we're committed to one another as long as our love will last. Okay, what do you do on the day you don't feel love? What, what do you believe? Do you believe that you're created in the image of God and in his likeness? Do you believe if you're a man, you were meant to be a man? If you're a woman, you were meant to be a woman? What do you believe? What do you believe? Because your beliefs are affecting your life right now. And and they're affecting your relationship with other people. Like if, if you have beliefs like, well, men are this and women are this and like if you bought into all of the critical theory, I was going to say a different word, but I'm going to say a better word, the critical theory stuff. <laughs> that just kind of divides and separates people into categories and defines all of them alike. That's going to affect your future. Because you're going to treat people that are black one way. You're going to treat people that are white one way. You're going to pe- treat people that are Asians one way. But if you believe God's word that says we're all the family of God and there is neither black or white or that's going to affect your future. It's going to affect your future. You can choose the world's way or you can choose the kingdom way, the media way or the kingdom way, the political way or the kingdom way. Your beliefs about your life, about the things around you, even about your job and your work are affecting your attitude. Sheila and I just went away for a few weeks and people have asked me, how, how, how was your time away, you and Pastor Sheila? And Pastor Sheila actually did come home and was a part of the services at our Bellevue location the last few weeks, but 
I was just like 24 hours at a time and then I'd tell her to get herself back to where I was. And, but we celebrated our 44th anniversary. I think that's right. Is that right? I think it's right. Forgive me, Sheila, if it's not right. I'm, it's way up there. The first thing I did after I was born is I married you. Like, that's, you and I both know. Like, but you know what? Every day doesn't feel like a day I wanted to stay married to her. And every day certainly didn't feel like a day that she wanted to stay married to me. One of the forces is the force of feelings. What are you going to do with that? Are you going to go where your feelings take you, or are you going to say, no, my feelings are fickle. My feelings change with the weather. Force of feelings. What are you going to believe? Are you going to believe you're not in love just because maybe you like to eat different food or And here we are, all these years later, my point was, and when people say to me, like, how was your time away? I, I just want to announce, and this is honest, like my wife's in service today. And I just want to announce to you, like, we're, we're red hot in love, crazy over one another. Can't keep our hands to ourselves. Like, like. It's bizarre. You get us away from work a little while and get our minds off of other stuff, and all we see is each other. It's like two kids on a honeymoon. Like, it's just crazy. But you don't have that harvest if you, if you don't sow those seeds, if you don't maintain those commitments, if you don't say, I love you, even when you don't feel the love. You don't have the harvest just by wishing something will happen. A farmer doesn't stand in front of a field and, and pray. I pray for potatoes in this field and, go, and reap a harvest of potatoes. I pray for corn in my field. You don't get that. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Well, I thought God was good. God is good, but he gave you the power to sow your seed. You want potatoes, sow seed for potato. You want corn, sow seed for corn. You want a good marriage, sow seed for a good marriage in your future. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big hand right now, can we? Whoa. I'm going to make it through. I'm going to make it through. I'm standing strong on you. Stand to your feet all across our locations oh, if you would today. Make it through. I'm Will you raise your hands in surrender to the word right now? Oh, Just, I'm gonna make God help us through. today. Guide us today. I'm standing strong May we understand the power within us oh, and the potential within us. have been given by you. May we choose well. May we choose life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to make it. Somebody needs to say that today. You just need to declare that from your heart today. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. God's given me the power. God's given me the strength. God's given me the grace today. firm foundation He's the rock on which I stand. stand when everything around me is shaking Thank you Lord God I've never been more glad I put my faith in Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful through generations I want to give you an opportunity right now 
to make the greatest, most important decision of your life, and that is to surrender your life and your future to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And what that means is to surrender your will to His will, your way to His way. You won't always get it right. You won't be perfect. But right now, you take the intention, you, the desire that you have in your heart, and you place it before God. And if you're here today and you want that, you want God's will, God's favor, God's plan, God's blessing, God's guidance, God's direction, God's word to govern your life and to govern your choices and to govern your, your future. I want to invite you to pray this prayer and pray it out loud. Don't hold back. Don't, don't wait because friends haven't made this choice yet or family hasn't made this choice yet. If this is you, Wherever you are, Yakima, DuPont, Bellevue, online, right here in Tacoma, wherever you are today, I want to invite you to pray this bold prayer. I call it the prayer of new beginnings. And I'm going to pray it, and I invite you to repeat after me. If you want a fresh start in your relationship with God, just say this out loud. Say, Lord Jesus, welcome to my world. Today, I invite you to come into my heart and come into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. I ask you to be the leader. I ask you to be the Lord over my life, over my future. Today I choose you. I choose your way, your word, and your will. I boldly declare I'm a child of God. I'm God's property in Jesus' name. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time or you recommitted your life to God, I want to welcome you right now to the family of God. Come on, we want to celebrate a new beginning in your life today. God bless you. A few moments ago, we prayed a prayer of new beginnings. And if you just prayed that prayer, we believe that you just made the best decision. And it's so important to tell someone. We aren't meant to walk out our faith journey alone. So we want to help equip you with some next steps. So just text the word CC Start to 97000 or click the link that you see right there in the chat. I can't say it enough, and Ashley did a great job of it right now, but this is a huge decision today. You just took a step. And I'm always a person like this. Once I take a step, I want to know what the next step is because you just don't take one step. You continue to take steps. And today you made that decision to give your life to Jesus, which is a huge step. But you know what your next step is? To let us know why because we want to come alongside so you and we want to encourage you. And then there'll be more steps after that and more steps after that. And that's what we want to help you with every single step to make sure as you go on this journey with Jesus that you have people alongside you. So please share with us today. You made a huge step. Help us take that next step with you today. Absolutely. So good, Pastor Jesse. And church family, if you've enjoyed today's message, we would love for you to help us on a few things. We are all online, so all the good things of like, subscribe, and share. We want to make sure that this message reaches as many people as possible. And last, if you'd like to partner with the mission of Champion Center, you can give by texting Champion Center to the number on your screen. Church family, thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you at Church Essentials and next Sunday. Church Kids, the latest episode of the Church Kids show is ready and waiting for you. So head on over to cc.church slash kids or visit the Church Kids playlist on the Champion Center YouTube page to check it out. We'll see you there.